Hey, what's up guys? This is LJ here, Lawrence James, coming at you with a Jungle Warwick Guide. The way that I run Warwick, I run him pretty much different than any other Jungle Warwick I've ever seen. And the main re reason with this is because I don't like his pre-level 6, and I usually play junglers that have good pre-level 6, because if something goes wrong, you're going to need, in solo queue, it's really important to be there to be able to back your team up before level 6. So, But uh, the new way that I play him, I discovered this kind of new uh, concept where you're just going to pretty much get level 6 as soon as possible before anyone else in the game, and then you're just going to carry the game from there. So it's still uh, it's still a little iffy because in case things go bad, you know, for your laners, levels 3 to 4, you know, 1, one through 4 basically, then, then you could have a tough time winning the game because of that. But this is the best way to play Warwick in my opinion. And uh, the way that we are running him, the runes and masteries that we're running, that's pretty much the entire... Uh, the entire concept of how you're going to run the Warwick is based around those runes and those masteries. We're running 9021. That's right, 21 in, in utility all the way down to the bottom. You're going to pick up that cooldown reduction. You're going to pick up the experience gains. That's the most important thing, the experience gain. And uh, there's just a really good amount of stuff in utility. And uh, the 9 in offense is basically just to help your mid game. It gives you extra cooldown reduction. Uh, and it gives you, or you could go attack speed potentially, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure I went cooldown reduction here just to get more, because you want massive amount of cooldown reduction for your ultimate, and it gives you magic pen early, so that in the mid game is really nice. The runes that I'm running, I'm running attack speed reds, armor yellows, magic scaling resist blues, and the experience gain quints. And so you have a really decent amount of experience gain. You get 6% from the quints alone. And uh, this is definitely the way that I like to play him. I also level up uh, different abilities than most people do. Most people, well, they'll, they'll always go W first, right, to, to get a clear time. But then I'll actually max W second instead of maxing my Q uh, second. Or, or first, I mean, because most people max their Q first. But I actually max my W first. And that's basically just because you're going to be in the jungle unless you're using your ultimate. And... D w is really nice in the jungle. So with those attack speed, you can just see with the attack speed reds and your W, you're able to uh, hit level 2 really fast. And you can see that we actually hit level 2 off of the blue buff alone without needing the smaller golem. So here I see some a fight breaking out. This is, this is not going to be a uh, very usual scenario because you're not going to want to do this. But we do force two flashes there, and now I just back out of there. Now my two people are really low, but uh, they did both save their flashes, I believe. No, Graves actually flashed that. So it was somewhat of an even trade. They did blow both of their flashes. but uh, So normally I would suggest you don't want to do that, especially when you're running quints like this, this, uh, this setup. You're just going to want to go from buff to buff to buff. That is the main uh, concept of running this type of build. Is you just want to go from one camp to the next, and just you want to hit level six as fast as possible. So here they did take my red, and uh, now we are seeing like th this is what happens when you can get countered like this. So now that I know he did my red, and uh, there's a good chance that he did my red first, which he actually did, and then he went to his blue. But uh, I, instead of just going right to his red and getting denied at his red, I'm just going to keep farming. I'm going to go right to golems and do golems. So this game is a perfect example of uh, like some some things are not going to go perfectly. You're not going to get every buff you need. You're, you're going to get some buff stolen and you need to adjust to that gameplay and just uh, and just see what you're going to do. So here I saw get, uh, Zin Zhao gank top and I know there's a chance that his red buff is probably up. So maybe I would potentially go and try to steal that but uh, we'll see what I do here. Here I'm just farming the uh, race. We're just the, That's what you're pretty much doing. Um, the, the, the right way to do this, I mean if you, if you can, you can try to steal a buff at level 1 which is really nice if you have your backup from your team. I'll try to do that a lot on Warwick, but uh, like you can see here, I started blue, so normally I would go do my red. If my red was still here, I would have done my red, then do golems, then do race, then do wolves, then go right back to golems, do race, do wolves, and if you do it the correct amount of time, it should be really easy for, uh, the, each camp will spawn exactly when you get there, so you can just completely keep farming, you're always farming something, and that is pretty much the way that you're going to want to run the utility here. So here I'm trying to come help uh, my Nidalee here who gets caught, and uh, we'll see what happens here. I see Zin's out coming in, and uh, he did see me there, but uh, Warwick is not terribly underpowered early level. He's he's okay one v one. He's not he's not terrible one v one. But uh, I do know his red buff is still up, so we're, I'm kind of waiting here to see what the Zinzao is going to do. Zinzao is going to face check this. Even though I don't have red buff, I know that I'm probably stronger than him. I do get a, an auto attack and then a Q on. He flashes in, which is interesting. But uh, he knocks me up there, and uh, we should be able to pick up this kill. Nidalee lands a nice uh, uh, spear there. I flash in just to land one more. Q and I'm uh, just kind of waiting for my Q to be back up and uh, Nidalee's able to pick up that buff so now she gets a double buff there and now we turn over to Ezreal and Fiddle who came in from the backside. Fizz jumps in on me and go ahead and picks up that kill. Nidalee picks up a kill as well at the same time so now this is a crazy fight and our bottom lane is unfortunately not able to help us at all there so their bottom lane uh, it, it's much easier for their bottom lane to respond to that than our bottom lane because we're in their jungle, so it's much easier for them. So we can't blame our bottom lane for that. That was definitely our fault. Uh, we should have gotten that kill right here and then just ran away. But, uh, I mean, it was okay for us to turn on to the Ezreal, I guess. But as soon as 
uh, F Fizz came in there, we were kind of completely screwed. But at least Nidalee did pick up a double kill. Uh, who, who got the double buffs there? I'm actually not sure. Oh, so Fizz got the double buffs there, and he actually uses the double buff to go kill our Lulu. So he's kind of snowballing out of control, which is never a good thing when you're playing against a Fizz. That is, like, the absolute worst thing that you want. But uh, we go right back to jungling. You know, this like, like I was saying, things are not always going to go perfect, but uh, that's okay. So... We're just going to keep farming. We go right to Wolves. Now we'll go to Race. And then we'll go to Golems. It is five minutes in the game. I can, if I farm correctly, if I if I farm correctly like the way I did the first, the, like I told you how I normally do it, from Blue to Red to Golems to Race to Wolves, if you do it that way, you can actually hit level six at like right about now. Which is absolutely insane from not even coming out of the jungle and just being able to hit level six off that. That's absolutely crazy. But uh, you can still see, even though I, I'm still keeping up with level with Zen Zhao, even though... Um, he did have two, but he has two, uh, an extra buff on me, which early game is absolutely devastating because that's an entire level. So uh, that's really good. But uh, we are still farming. You can see I am maxing that W second, and that's just because you're going to be in the jungle almost 100%. Of the, oh, like you're going to be in the jungle 80% of the time. The other 20% is when you have your ultimate up. And that is pretty much how you have to play Warwick. You play, you can play him this uh, this way no matter what, no matter what your your quints are. But it's just much better with experience quints because you are going to hit that level six faster. If we didn't have these experience quints right now, considering all the stuff that's went wrong this game, um, then it, we potentially would be like barely level four, and it would be really hard to get level six. So this is kind of uh, the best way to do it. But uh, I should hit level five off of this camp, I believe, uh, pretty easily. Yeah, I do. I do hit level five there. And uh, this is like what you're keeping track of is just where you at in level. And when you are playing Warwick, you need to tell your teammates because a lot of people don't understand uh, Warwick, especially in the lower elo bracket. You need to be. You need to tell your teammates. You need to stress the idea that before level six, you are pretty freaking useless. Like you're not very good champion until you get level six. Once you get level six, you're an assassin. You can set up ganks. You can initiate. You can do everything that you need to do. And uh, that's really good. The thing that you're not, since you're not running 21 in defense, let me talk about that a little bit because a lot of people. Ooh, a little bit of lag there. That was strange. But, uh, okay, anyway, so the 21 in defense, uh, a lot of people like to run that. And that makes sense uh, because he is tanky, and you can use him as a tanky champion for late game, which is really good. But uh, you're not going to be as strong early game. Your ganks aren't going to be as good, and you're not going to have as much uptime on your ultimate, which is, in my opinion, is uh, more important, the uptime on your ultimate, the cooldown reduction, and uh, the mobility that you get. You're just ganking lanes on your ultimate alone. Uh, you're not going to scale as well into late game going utility, but uh, that you make up for it mid game with your ganks, and you pretty much win the game in mid game, which is unlike. So here's Zinzao's coming in. I'm just trying to pick up that kill as fast as possible, and uh, I go ahead and smite it because he was in range to smite it eventually, so I just did that. But uh, we we are not level I'm trying to get level six here. I must be really close if I'm trying to kill this minion here. Yeah, I am I get level six there and now I'm very useful to the team. So instead of just helping the team there doing nothing because I'm level five, I can't do much, then I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I did buy a vision ward there and uh, use the vision ward on dragon and now we should be able to pick up this dragon really easily. It's very important to buy wards, very important to buy a vision ward uh, early game. I find that very effective in solo queue because you're able to get a few uses out of that. So here they jump onto fiddlesticks. I just want to do this dragon and uh, they'll zone out the fiddlesticks pretty easily. The fiddle's not even level six, so this should be a really easy dragon for us. We don't have uh, Smite there, but uh, that's okay because the Zen Zhao had to back out because he was so low from that engagement down here. And uh, the, these are uh, getting an early dragon is definitely really nice. You can see uh, we are level up on the Zen Zhao, and uh, we are going to keep farming the experience here. Uh, you can see we have a decent amount of experience. And now my red buff is up. I know that because uh, we, we did clear it that first time. We cleared uh, the little golem that Zen Zhao left as a present for us. But uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, Fizz was diving our Nidalee, so I was potentially coming to see if Fizz was going to dive in here, then I would just ult him. But uh, the other thing I like to do is get mobility boots onto Warwick. Uh, your build order is definitely important when you're playing utility Warwick, even more so than, uh, than defensive Warwick. But uh, we do pick up that red buff, and now Zinsao is coming in from the backside, which is fine. Uh, my team pinged him because we saw him in a ward or something. I'm not sure how we saw him, but I do have red buff, and I am level 6, so there's no way that he's going to be able to outdo me here. And uh, so I ult him as soon as he got away from my auto attack range, and now you can see I'm slowing him, and I'm running back. I'm auto attacking, slowing him, running back, and now Zinsao is completely screwed. He has nothing left. He uh, could have flashed over, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure I would have just flashed over after him. But uh, here I'm trying to pick up the kill on f on Fizz. I flash over the top of here, and hopefully I don't die to that. Oh my gosh, I'm so low. But uh, I should be okay. I'm out of there with uh, just as much health. So all planned. But uh, Fizz did come in there, and Nidalee is not going to win that 1v1, especially after Fizz is so fed early game. So I can't expect much help from Nidalee in my jungle. So I pick up the kill on Zinzao real quick, and then uh, I tried to duel the Fizz and realized that it was obviously a really dumb idea. And uh, I go ahead and flash out of there. So... A little harm done. I missed my flash. Which flash is really important on Warwick. It's like probably the most important uh, 
Flash in the game right now is just because getting into range to ult your people with Flash is just insanely important. Looking at the farm, I have 32 farm. Zinzao only has 18. And uh, this is very important to note, so I'm keeping up with the solo lanes somewhat. I mean, uh, actually, wow, Graves is doing really well this game against the Ezreal, which is really nice. But uh, maybe, you know, maybe that was because Ezreal had to come in their jungle early and uh, that whole level one thing, Ezreal had to go back and I'm pretty sure Graves and uh, our Nami stayed in lane. So that definitely uh, definitely helped out there. But like I said, we are just farming our jungle until our ult is back up, which our ult is up now. And I see Fizz diving in and Zinzao diving in as well. So Z uh, Zinzao was trying to go for the dive kill onto Nidalee and uh, I'm just going to ult him under the tower and kill him. So now my ult's on cooldown and I'm just going to go back to the jungle and farm up. So Zinzao is making a few big mistakes here. He's trying to invade my red when he was level 5, not knowing... Oh, no, he did know I was level 6 probably because he saw me at Dragon, I would think. But, uh, yeah, big mistake for him to try to do that. No point in him trying to do that. So now he is level 6. I'm a whole level up on him, and I'm almost level 8. And uh, so I am keeping up with solo lanes and levels, and this is one of the benefits that experience has. And uh, you pretty much just farm your jungle every single time your ult is on cooldown. So once it's off cooldown, I'll, I'll be looking around to gank different lanes. And even when it gets close, when it gets to around this time where it's like 15 seconds left on it, I'm looking around. So right now I'm thinking about maybe ganking top because I see how overextended Aatrox is and I know there's probably a good chance that Zin is going to gank him. And these are important things that you need to be looking for. And uh, so I know it's not warded. Aatrox told me it's not warded and I'm probably looking to see that Poppy had not uh, warded yet and he didn't buy a ward and he didn't, he didn't ward yet. So I am waiting here. Now I am going to go back because it looks like Poppy was going back. But now Poppy stays here, actually. So now it's potential to kill this guy. But uh, Poppy is a very hard person to gank just because he does have that ultimate. But uh, we'll see if I'm able to catch him here. I'm thinking about it. No, uh, I might have been able to catch up to him and dive him. But uh, not yet. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and go back in this bush. Zinzao is waiting top. So just like I said, uh, Zinzao was looking to gank this top lane. But since I'm so much stronger than him right now in a 2 versus 2 situation, we probably should win that. And Zinzao is not going to want to gank that. That would not be very smart for him. But uh, he has made some pretty dumb moves this game, so he might potentially do that anyways, but uh, that's okay. Uh, so now I, I do I still do have my ult up, and now I see Fizz ulting in onto the Nidalee, and he, I know he's going to try to dive in, and uh, now Fizz blew his, uh, his E, so I know this should be really easy for us. And uh, so Fizz eat away, and I know if I can catch him, then there's a potential that we could kill him, but Nidalee d isn't even following up on that, so there's really no reason for me to do that. He went and vision warded that. Uh, right, that's not good. So he's kind of dying there. That's not good. But I now I am looking bottom. So we did force a flash there. And now this should be a really easy kill. We don't have a ward in this bush. So I'm just waiting. I'm cutting off their angle. I'm staying close to that wall so that I can ult whoever comes in range. And now I ult in onto Fiddle because this is going to be the easiest target. And we're just going to take him down. So this is the power of the Warwick ultimate. It's probably the best, one of the best initiations in the game. And uh, now I go back in this bush because Ezreal does not know if I'm in there or not. And now Ezreal is not going to be able to come up and play aggressive at all. And he's going to miss the S because of that. So. Very important to uh, know what you're doing. Now, I do ha I, I do finish the Ancient Golem because it gives you everything you want. It gives you the uh, extra damage to the creeps. It gives you the cooldown reduction. It gives you tenacity. So it gives you a little bit of everything. And... Uh we, and we do pick up the boots of mobility, so this is a different than what most people do. So, like, when you're going to go tanky Warwick, you're, n you're probably never going to go mo boots of mobility. You're going to go boots of armor. You're going to go boots of anything, pretty much anything else. And uh, the, way, the, the way that I like to run Warwick, like I said, I'm just always going to run that uh, boots of mobility on him and just pretty much gank the lanes every single time I ult up. So we give the blue to Nidalee, and uh, hopefully he doesn't die with the blue because that would kind of suck. But uh, my ult is almost back up in 20 seconds, and I'm pretty much just waiting for my ult to be back up because there's not much I can do without that being up. But uh, they did have that warded, which is unfortunate. Uh, so they did see me there, I believe. But uh, we are now I'm looking to see if his red buff is up. I'm trying to invade his jungle. I am level 8, uh, almost level 9. So like I said, I am keeping up with all the solo lanes. Here I see Fiddle ulting in. And uh, now I'm coming down here to support my team. And this should be a really easy kill for us. I ult in onto the Ezreal. And uh, he's going to have no way to escape from this pretty much. And uh, we are chasing him down with my E. I'm able to... Uh, I notice I'm taking the tower. I'm taking the tower as many hits as possible, trying to give Graves that kill. And Graves probably could have gotten that kill if uh, he knew what I was doing. But uh, he probably didn't realize that I was taking the tower for so long on purpose. I was taking the tower there so that basically he could get a few hits onto Fiddlesticks and potentially take him down. So now Dragon respawns because we timed it and uh, this should be a pretty easy Dragon for us. We know Zinzao died or we know Zinzao was up top because uh, we saw Aatrox fighting him. So now Zinzao is way behind. He can't even do his own blue and Aatrox is pretty far ahead and uh, he's just able, he's just been able to 1v1 this Poppy and uh, Zinzao has been not, not been able to make any kind of uh, impact on that lane up there. So we pick up another dragon, and uh, this is like what I'm saying. Like a lot of people that play Warwick, they just they just hope they just hope they get to late game. When you play defensive Warwick, that's what you're hoping. You're hoping you get to late game. 
you're hoping your team doesn't feed, you're hoping your team stays even, and then you can carry them late game. Because Warwick is a really good champion in late game, especially when you put defensive talents into him. But the way that I like to play Warwick is all about your mid game. It's all about ganking lanes and being uh, a force with your ultimate. So you want to get to level 6 as fast as possible, and then you just gank the lanes every single time your ultimate's back up. And so now we are looking to build the Aegis. So we still do build a little bit tanky. But like I said, we are not going to be super tanky late game. After this, depend. it really just depends. After you build your Aegis, it really just depends on how how good you are, how, how well you're doing in the game. And then what you want to build at that point. Because you could build Blade of the Rune King. If, uh, especially with this type of build with utility. It's really nice to have Blade of the Rune King. Because you're pretty much just an assassin. And you jump in with your ultimate. Then Blade of the Rune King. And it's just super easy to kill somebody. And then you back off once your ultimate's on cooldown. But uh, that is something you could do. Or you could just go tanky. And you could just still be tanky for late game. But uh, we'll see how we do. We are 3-1-3. We're up a decent amount of gold right now over their team. And that's because of those dragons and those kills that we have. And I'm still uh, out farming the Zin Zhao. So every, like I said, you're, you, with the cooldown reduction, you have pretty much no cooldown on uh, your ultimate. And now Nidalee jumps in here and Fizz. I ult him before Nidalee dies. Hopefully, no, Nidalee dies anyways, but we should pick up that kill pretty easily. Yeah, we pick up that kill onto Fizz. And uh, so that, that's unfortunate that Nidalee died. But these are things I'm in So while I was farming those raids, I was watching mid lane. I'm watching all the different lanes while I'm farming. And uh, since I knew my ultimate was going to be back up, I see him dive onto the Nidalee, and I know that we, we should be able to pick up that kill really easily. Because once Fizz ults in, you pretty much know that he's going to all in no matter what position he's in. And uh, that is the best time when you're ganking a Fizz. It's really hard to gank a Fizz because they ha he has E, he has his uh, Q to get away. He has a lot of different abilities to kind of slip out of there. His E is probably the most important. So if you see him blow E, then that's pretty much the time you want to initiate onto a Fizz. You can't really gank a Fizz if his E is still up on cooldown. So you pretty much need to wait until he all ins your mid lane. So now I'm looking to go bottom. Uh, I finish up the Aegis. And I go ahead and pick up that Vision Ward. And like I said, you're buying wards pretty much throughout the entire game. And uh, the Vision Ward provides us with uh, a lot of different uses for it. We could just wait for the next dragon. And here I tried to avoid the Ezreal ult because I didn't want... Uh, honestly, I just didn't want Ezreal to see me there, but I'm pretty sure he did. But uh, Zin Zhao made a nice play here and came bottom and pushed bottom. But Aatrox is coming in from the backside. And so now I know if we can catch up to them, then we can definitely get some kills here. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Aatrox coming in from the backside, yeah, so he lands onto Ezreal, I ult onto the Ezreal, and this should be a really easy pickup for us, yep, we pick up that kill super easy, and now I'm coming in from the backside, and chasing them down with E, I'm super tanky right now with the Aegis, and uh, this should be a really easy kill, because my E does give me that movement speed, and it's a really easy kill for us, so we pick up that with a Q, and uh, so like I said, we are maxing the Q second, and then uh, you, potentially you could put some points into E, but I don't prefer to do that, so here Fizz is... Uh, jumping in on my Aatrox, and he does pop his passive, but uh, I am slowing him with red buff, and we should get out of there relatively clean. Uh, now we're now we Grace finishes off the tower, so this should be a really easy pickup onto the uh, Zin Zhao, and that is a really easy pickup. I pick it up with red buff while Lulu uh, helps out with the damage, and now Poppy co tries to join the party down here, and uh, meanwhile, our mid lane has just been pushing top lane the whole time, our Nidalee, and so that was really good for our team right there. So now we're way ahead. I know that his red buff is up, but it uh, looks like Fizz is thinking about jumping in on me. But uh, I do have a lot of support somewhat near here. But uh, this should be a pretty easy pickup for us. So that I pretty much... Oh, yeah. So there's the Fizz right there. He's looking to come in on me, potentially. I'm trying to juke him out, and uh, I don't want him to land Z on me. And now I'm kind of baiting him a little bit, potentially. I don't have any teammates left, though, so it's just better for me to get out of there. And at this point, I'm really tanky. Fizz is not going to be able to kill me pretty much 1v1, and... Uh, at least it might, it might, he might be able to kill me with Ignite and with his, uh, his ultimate up, but that's okay. So we might take this blue here. We'll see if uh, Nidalee wants it or if she doesn't want it. But uh, blue is really good on Warwick, especially when you're out of mana like this. It's always really nice. You're always a happy grandma when you get that. But it looks like I'm thinking, Nidalee, do you want it? I'm probably telling him, and he probably said no. As you can see, I stopped attacking the blue buff and attacked the, the little minions there. Uh, blue buff's really good on Nidalee, especially when you're AP, obviously, because uh, that way you're just going to be pushing... Oh, wow, he's AD. He's an AD Nidalee. Okay, so that's a little different. So maybe he went AD just because of the Fizz uh, being mid. Maybe that's what it was, but uh, that's okay because we do have AP uh, damage from the Warwick, so that's okay for late game, I guess. We are 7-1-3. I probably am sitting on a ton of gold right now from all that. 
Uh, I'm sitting on 2,000 gold right now. So uh, pretty much, like I said, this is like how you control mid game. You pretty much ga we pretty much ganked every single lane except top lane, which we did have an appearance on, and uh, that's kind of how I like to play him. So I do get feared by the uh, fiddlesticks here, but I go ahead and ult in onto the fiddlesticks, and now I'm slowing him with red buff, and I don't think there's any way this guy's gonna be able to get out of here. No, we pick up that kill pretty easily, and uh, now Poppy is pretty much dying here solo. Uh, we should be able to pick up this kill as well. Poppy does get a double kill onto our Aatrox and our Nidalee, but we go ahead and pick up that kill. I pick up the double kill onto the Poppy. And and uh, so now we're just really strong. We have a ton of gold. We have even more gold now. How much do we have? We have almost 3,000 gold. And uh, we're going to be able to buy some pretty nice items with this. So we are devastating the team. You can just see that we are pushing the lead. We're not... We're not just sitting back doing nothing. This is a lot. This is kind of a more of a team play kind of thing more than it is has anything to do with how you play Warwick. But uh, when you are playing solo queue, you need to make the enemy team pun punish them. You need to punish them when you're ahead. And this is exactly what we've done this game. You can see the gold count. We're absolutely uh, devastating them in 13k, almost 13k ahead. And uh, so now I come over and take his blue buff. And uh, like I said, you're just gonna you're just gonna devastate this team. Even though I have that much, I'm sitting on that much gold. I'm still at full health with red buff, uh, double buff, and I, I'm just gonna devastate their team right now because I'm still stronger than them even without spending that 3,000 gold. I'm still just as strong if not stronger than the rest of their team without spending that. So that's what we're going to do. I'm g Now my red buff is up and uh, I'm probably just may maybe I'm looking to buy that Blade of the Rune King. I'm, a I'm not that far off of it and uh, I'm pretty sure it's 3,200. Exactly. So that'd be really nice if we can pick up that item. But uh, maybe we'll pick up something else. I don't know. You could pick, pick up a Sunfire Cape or uh, pretty much anything that you want. At this point, I like cooldown reduction. Spirit Visage is an unbelievable item on Warwick, and I pretty much suggest building it every single game. But um, we'll see. They don't really have that much magic damage. Fizz is their only magic damage, and uh, if I, as long as I ult him, then uh, he's pretty much not going to be a threat. So we go ahead and pick up, pick up the Blade of the Rune King, which has amazing uh, several usages for us. Uh, you can see we are 913. We're definitely really fed right now. We have the Aegis, we have the Blade of the Rune King, the Ancient Golem, and the Mobility Boots. Uh, we did max that W, we did max the Q second, and now we are looking to max our E. A few points, like I was saying earlier, I'm not sure if I finished my thought on that, but a lot of people put uh, a few points into Blood Scent in the middle of the game, kind of randomly. Um, and the reason for that is it just gives you the extra movement speed, which isn't a bad idea, but uh, since I'm la maxing my W second, I don't want to waste any of my points putting it into, into E and not putting it into Q, because Q is really important when you're when you're uh, fighting people uh, generally but uh, like I said we are max we did max that W first so that is unlike a lot of people do but I would suggest doing that especially when you're farming the creeps this much but we are looking to dive bottom here and uh, this should be, like I said, we are pushing the lead, even though since we have this inhibitor, this should be pretty easy for us. I ult in onto Ezreal there, Blade of the Rune Kingdom, and force him to pop barrier, but it does look like he's going to get out of there. You can see the cooldown is not even that, that bad on my ultimate right now. Where are we? Yeah, here it is. It's like 40 seconds, which is, or it's 51 seconds, so that's like pretty much nothing. But since my ult is down, I don't want to fight them. I'm, uh, we're just pushing up and kind of waiting until they overextend and waiting for my ult to back up. Because literally, it's like one of the best ways to initiate a fight is with Warwick ult. Your team just naturally is going to focus that target that you're ulting, so hopefully. So here Poppy's diving in like a hero, and like I said, Poppy's really hard to kill 1v1, but Graves is pretty fed, and he, he's doing a decently job kiting him, and we're just zoning out their team so that they can't come and help the Poppy, and so as soon as that Poppy ultimate is gone, we're just going to jump onto the Poppy and kill him. So Poppy hero move did not work out, and uh, so a lot of people I see, like when Poppy dives in, they just kind of ditch the they ditch him, but instead we zoned out the rest of their lane. Here I flash in and jump right onto, onto Zinzao, and this should be an easy kill. I get feared, but uh, this should be an easy pickup. Hopefully, maybe not, but the rest of my team is able to dive in there and do a little bit of damage. I pick up that kill on Zinzao as I chase him down with my E and uh, slow him with red buff. So now I turn right onto the tower, and uh, I'm just kind of ending the game here while they're picking up the inhibitor, and the, my team should be able to join in afterwards and pick up this kill as well. So we should be able to end the game here. We are 10-1-4, and uh, this is kind of how I like to play Warwick. You definitely want to play him for the mid-game, but it, maybe we won't be able to end here because of uh, them coming back up. But I don't know. It might be close. We're kind of pushing the minion wave and kind of... So here Fizz diving in the background, and uh, I don't have my ultimate up or anything. I'm kind of thinking about who to ult right here. I'm probably looking to go on to Poppy, and we jump right on to Poppy. I'm slowing in with red buff. I get Fizz ulted. I step away from my teammates and uh, make sure that I don't knock them up in the Fizz ult. Now that pretty much the other team has no hope, we have this many inhibitors down, and uh, now I'm kind of overextending here. This is probably not very smart of me, but uh, I might... The Joker might be able to get away. Uh, Lulu ult. Uh, I'm not getting out of there. I do ult on to Ezreal, and I die like a hero. But uh, I probably just wanted to end the game. And that was not a smart thing to do, especially in solo queue. You never know. Even though we have two inhibitors down and both their dex turrets, I've seen stranger things happen, and I've seen... Uh, maybe maybe not a goal difference of this much comeback, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not possible. The other team potentially could win. 
But uh, this is how I like to look at my dead grandma body. Oh, that's sad. Oh, it's so sad looking. Yeah, but uh, that is like how I like to play Warwick. And uh, I suggest playing him this way. He's kind of outdated a little bit. He's outdated by other junglers. And this is kind of the way that I make up for it. Is you, you just need to get to level 6 as fast as possible with the experience quins and uh, the utility masteries. And then from there, you just carry the game and go into late game. So now we go ahead and build the Giant's Belt and uh, Cloth Armor. So I'm probably looking to go uh, Doran's Blade just because I'm not really worried about Fizz magic damage or Fiddle magic damage. But um, I'm kind of more worried about maybe the Ezreal. And maybe the Zinzao as well, even though he's only 1 in 8. Uh, Zinzao actually does a decent amount of team fight damage. And uh, so that's kind of what we're doing here. I'm still farming. You can see the look at that attack speed. Wonderful, wonderful attack speed with the Blade of the Rune King and the uh, W popped. Pretty much when you max your W, you can pretty much almost have 100% uptime on it, which is really nice. Now I don't know why I'm farming. The, there's really no reason for me to be farming here. Maybe I'm close to an item or something. But uh, we can go ahead and fast forward this, I would think. So I'll go ahead and fast forward it a little bit for you guys. All right, so four times the speed. Look at how fast I am with those mobility boots. I'm just flying around here. So here I get on onto Poppy. I ult him, and uh, Poppy's trying to 1v1 me, but we go ahead and win that 1v1, so I pick up a kill there. And uh, so when you, when they're kind of playing like this, let me slow down a little bit. All right, so we're back to normal. Uh, when, when they're when they're kind of like just defending like this, you just want to push something. So I'm going to go ahead and take his blue. I'm gonna We're going to push top lane, and we should be able to pick up that kill very easily. And uh, so now we go ahead and pick up that. And uh, now we can just end the game when you push this three. This is the safest way to end it. It's just when you when there's one nexus, when there's one uh, turret up in their base, you just take that, you just siege that turret down, take it down, and uh, let the minions do all the work for you. So here I jump in and um, right onto Fiddle. He's ulting with uh, the life steal up on onto Graves, but we are able to pick up that kill through that. And now we turn onto the Zinzao, and we should be able to pick up this kill as well. So we get a double kill there. And uh, now we're turning onto the Fizz, and he pretty much has no hope. But I go ahead and do an ult him. He's probably not going to die. He's probably going to get out of there. I would think. Yeah, he goes ahead and gets out of there and uh so the joker gets away but we go ahead and now we turn on to the nexus and uh this should be a really easy kill for us so we pick up the kill there and uh that was that is the game that is how i like to play him. we end 13 to 5 and uh that is how you play warwick you play him as a mid game beast and uh you're gonna naturally scale into late game obviously if you're this fed so if you have a decent mid game then you're gonna do well late game but thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe where are we going hey come back let's find some friends